Hey folks, Andy here. Thanks for joining me. Right, this time we're going to take a look at cleaning guitars. This is one of those things that really should be quick, simple and cheap to do, but sometimes it seems like it's not. So let's have a look at what we should be doing, what we don't need to be doing and what we really shouldn't be doing. Right, guitar bodies, usually made out of wood, occasionally something else, typically coated with a protective layer. You get polyesters, polyurethanes, you get acrylics, you get nitrocellulose sprayed on. You might get a rub in wax or oil finish. You might get a true varnish finish. You might get a guitar with no finish on it. You might get something with like cowhide or snake skin on it. But most of the time we're looking at wood with a sprayed on coating. It gives the manufacturer the opportunity to put color on the guitar. It gives a smooth finish, which might be gloss or satin or matte. It protects the wood from getting dirt in it. It locks moisture into the body so you don't have to worry about it drying out and cracking. All this means that most of the time when we're cleaning a guitar, we are literally just doing that. We're cleaning it. And the thing I find the most useful for doing that is one of these. This is just a microfiber cloth. Now, you can go to a guitar store and buy a specialist guitar cleaning cloth, or you can go to a supermarket and pay two or three quid for a packet of half a dozen of these things. This is a supermarket one. They do exactly the same job and are so much cheaper. All we're going to do with this is wipe the body over. First off, it'll act as a duster. It'll pick up any loose grime. Just shake it out to get rid of it. And then give the body just a buff with the cloth. It will pick up grease, trap it in the fibres, and then you can just throw this in the wash afterwards to freshen it up. If you need a bit more than a dry wipe over, you can just moisten it. I've just got some tap water here. We're not washing the guitar. We're just getting this damp enough so that it grabs onto the surface a little bit. That'll do a lot to get the general blood, sweat and tears out of it. And then just buff it with a dry bit of cloth or a fresh cloth. If you need a little bit more than that, you can add a drop of detergent. Add a drop of detergent to the water. Or you can go like a 50-50 solution of white vinegar. White vinegar will make your guitar smell a bit, but it's not like chip shop vinegar. It's nothing as bad as that and it fades quite quickly. If you've got something which is not really baked on and problematic, I will use this. It's lighter fuel, it's naphtha. Now it's petroleum based, so you need to be a little bit cautious. Don't smoke while you're working with it. I have used all of this stuff for years, including on nitrocellulose guitars and never had any issues with it. But as with anything like that, you, you try it on your own risk. Try it on a, test it on a piece of guitar that you don't generally see. Just make sure it's not gonna do any harm in your particular case. But having said that, that will get the body nice and clean. And that is just about all that we usually need to do. Now, you might think, what about polishing the guitar? The finish that's on there gives a nice smooth finish in most cases anyway. If you've got a gloss finish and you want to make it even glossier, then yep, you could put a polish, a wax on there. Say if you had a photo shoot, a big, you know, something that you just wanted to look at absolutely immaculate. What I would say is do not put polish or wax on a satin or matte finish guitar, it'll look horrible. You get furniture polish, and furniture polish tends to be based around beeswax or silicon a lot of the time, you know, the stuff that you just buy off the shelf. They are both soft, they both buff up really quickly, give a nice shine, and then as you play, they tend to go really scabby looking, and you'll soon end up with a guitar that looks worse than if you hadn't done it. Beeswax I would avoid, silicon I would say, do not put it near anything that you care about ever. It has got a horrible habit, if you have the slightest bit of permeability in the finish, so you've got nitrocellulose or something like that, or a wax or oil finish, you put silicon on and it will tend to find its way through the finish and bloom out on the wood of the guitar. So you get this horrible marking. The only way to get rid of it is to scrape the finish, which is a big price to pay for just saving a little bit of effort on buffing up. If you really want to get a wax finish, use Canuba wax. It's a hard wax. It stays looking better for longer and it doesn't destroy anything that it comes into contact with. Okay, plastics. Plastics, I will do the same job as the guitar body. I will dust them over, and I might use a dab of vinegar in some water, something like that, if there's anything particularly sticky on there. I'll probably not use the lighter fuel because I don't know what the plastic is made out of, and petroleum products and plastics often don't work very nicely together. The, the scratch plates on guitars do get scratched up, except the fact that a bit of player relicking is just what's going to happen. It's a body contact instrument. Learn to love it as it is. 
that'll get your plastics pretty much sorted out. Now, what you do sometimes find is you get bits of guitar that are not that easy to get a hold of. And an example of that might be on this strat with the strings on it. It's kind of hard to get in and clean up the bits in between the pickups. So what I will do is I will use something like this, which is just a, a bit of cotton. This is actually the hem off an old cotton sheet, but use a bit of T-shirt, something like that. And you can just thread it through into those awkward to get to places. And it's just like, it's just like flossing. You can use it in between bridges and tailpieces on Gibson style guitars in between the pickups. You can get down to the headstock and feed it under the strings to clean those bits, get in between the tuning pegs and just get things looking nice. So that will do for your hard to reach bits and plastics. Right, next up, metalwork. Most of the metalwork on a guitar is going to be made out of steel, brass. It might be made out of aluminium. If you're lucky, it might be titanium. If you're unlucky, it might be that sort of horrible zinc pot metal that some manufacturers still use. It'll typically be coated with chrome or nickel or gold. It might be powder coated. It might just be polished up. You get that quite often with aluminium, or it might be polished up and lacquered over. Same things apply to cleaning your metalwork. Just, just use the cloth, dab of vinegar, something like that. If you really need it, you can typically safely use the lighter fuel on metalwork. And if you really want to get a good shine on something that's very sort of marred up and tarnished, you could use specialist metal polish. But be aware, metal polish is abrasive. And those metals that you have being coated, well, chrome is probably fine. Nickel may be a bit less so. Gold is generally thin and soft. Powder coating, an absolute no-no. And if you've got something which is polished, you might polish it less finely and dull it. If you've got something which is lacquered, you will make it look absolutely dreadful. So be, be very sort of sparing with your use of metal polishes. Now, a thing I think you have to decide on is some parts of the metalwork tend to be very easy to get to. So things like on the strat, you've got the jack plate, you've got the uh, vibrato arm, the outside edges of the tailpiece, some bits less so. The saddles are quite fiddly. On something like a Gibson, you've typically got a stop tailpiece, which is easy, and a bridge, which is less easy. Just decide if you really want to risk making some parts of your body of your metal work really, really shiny and sparkly and other bits looking a bit dull and crap. For me, I will tend to clean them to the point where bits of skin and finger and stuff that get stuck on the metal will come off it. I will clean up any traces of rust or anything like that and then generally leave it. Again, it's a body contact instrument. It is going to look relic. Some people pay a fortune to have their guitars look as though they've played them for 80 years. It's probably not a bad idea to accept that. Okay, necks on guitars. Some guitars have a neck which is made out of different wood. Other guitars will have a neck which is made out of the same stuff as the body. In any case, I will generally clean the back of the neck in the same way as the body, but I will not wax the back of the neck. If you start putting wax polishes on here, you find that they kind of make, they go a bit grabby after a while and they will slow down the movement of your hands. A lot of players will wire wool or sand off the backs of guitar necks specifically just to get a slick feel on there. So don't ruin it by waxing up. If you have a guitar which has got an unfinished or a lightly finished neck like a Music Man, where they will often just oil them, see what the manufacturer recommends. I think Music Man recommend or used to using a gunstock oil. So go, go with something like that just to, uh, just to sort of protect the wood from the point of view of moisture loss. Necks are long and thin, so you need to look after them a little bit. Right, on the front of your neck, you've got a different matter. This is where you've got your fretboard. And fretboards come into contact with your fingers a lot. They can get quite dirty. Now, this guitar has got a maple fingerboard, a maple fretboard, and it is lacquered over. So all you're going to tend to do on the guitar like this is once you take the strings off, is get your cloth and just clean. Don't do anything. Don't put anything on a lacquered fingerboard. Just, just get it clean. Now, what I will say is, if you look down the edges of where the frets are, you will sometimes find that you get a sort of horrible greeny black gunk growing in there. It's the result of oils and acids out of your fingers. You get bacterial growth. It's a bit nasty. 
you can clean it out simply with the strings off by scraping just do it once along each side of each fret with something like this this is just a wooden barbecue skewer it's wood it's not going to scratch the lacquer it's not going to scratch the fret wire and it's got a blunt point on it so it'll get right into the corners and get that sorted out for you i have seen recommendations that say that if you want to get this stuff cleaned up you can use very fine grade wire wool and just clean across the frets be aware that if you use wire wool however fine it is it is going to dull the lacquer it's going to risk putting micro scratches in your fret wire and because wire wool starts to disintegrate the moment you rub it against anything you're going to get little metal filings and you've got pickups here that are made out of magnets so if you want to use wire wool you need to tape over your pickups otherwise they're going to end up looking like little steel hedgehogs if you're taping over your pickups you need to make sure that the tape you're using is is not going to leave residue behind that you then have to worry about how to clean off or if it's going directly onto the wood of your guitar that it's not going to finish like a delicate nitrocellulose finish something like that for a coated maple fingerboard or if you've got a lacquered rosewood fingerboard treat it exactly the same way clean it string it and get on with it okay let's just have a quick look at something a little tiny bit different right gibson sg in so many ways similar from a cleaning point of view to the strap we just looked at there's the tailpiece i spoke about that is really easy to clean up the bridge less so but what we really want to have a look at here is the fingerboard and that is because this is an exposed wood fingerboard what that means is that it doesn't have a coating of a lacquer over the wood the wood can dry out when it does it tends to look a little bit pale we want to clean well we can clean and we want to clean this sort of stuff up so you can use the microfiber cloth as we've looked at but you can also use something like this this is a dunlop guitar fretboard cleaner it's one of the few actual guitar products that i buy with this stuff you spray it onto a bit of tissue paper or a cloth and then just wipe and clean across and it does a pretty good job of lifting dirt and grease out of the wood if you want to use lemon oil use lemon oil sparingly and use it as a degreaser and cleaner although it says it's an oil it's not a great fretboard dresser so treat lemon oil as a cleaner and just as a sort of warning don't be tempted to use lemon oil on varnished or on maple necks it will dull them down and look horrible once you've got your fingerboard clean then you will probably want to treat it if for no other reason than to make it look deep and rich and nice i use the other half of the dunlop kit this is a fretboard dresser now this comes in a bottle with a felt pad and all you do is with the strings off you kind of draw it across the wood in between the frets because the frets are further apart at the low end of the neck and closer together at the top end of the neck there's less wood here so I'll tend to draw lines at the bottom of the neck and put dabs in place as I go up the neck. And of course, on something like the Gibson with these inlays, you've got areas where you've not got much wood at all. Do that sparingly, rub it in with a bit of tissue paper, give it five, 10 minutes, give it a buff up and you'll get a nice sort of dull shine on it. I will say that I have seen a video with a guitar YouTuber pouring a bottle of dressing oil down the neck like that and if you do that you're probably going to go broke because this stuff really isn't very cheap um, you don't use much of it I've had this bottle for about six years but certainly you don't want to be pouring it all over the place you'll have a hell of a cleanup and also where we looked at the the gunk that grows up by the frets understand that these frets are fitted into slots that are cut across the fretboard if you pour loads of liquid in there it can seep down between the fret wire and the wood soften the wood and you can end up with lifting frets and also more of that horrible gunky black stuff growing in there which you really don't want so use it but use it sparingly and get your fingerboard looking nice string up and off you go strings while we're talking about strings after you play your guitar it's probably worthwhile giving your strings a little bit of a cleanup because they tend to grab bits off your fingers especially on these um wound strings and the stuff that I use, the, the other actual guitar products that I will buy, I use fast fret. I've used this stuff for years and years and years. And all this is, this is an old one in a plastic container. I think they're back in tins now. And all this is, it's an applicator 
with a pad on it and the pad is soaked in mineral oil just just light mineral oil and what you do is you when you've played you rub it along the strings like that and then you get the cloth that comes in the kit and if you thread the cloth under and then just draw it backwards and forwards now for some reason they do insist on giving you a cloth which is very linty and sort of tends to leave little nodules stuck on the strings so i use this this is just a lint free cloth so get your fast thread on there put it under wipe up and down do that on each string and you can sort of see on there it's got all the lines where it's just cleaned up the strings as i've used it and then i'll just give it a once over wipe and you're done fast fret isn't the only one of these dunlop isn't the only one of these lots of other manufacturers Dario do full kits and stuff i'm sure ernie ball does music nomad and so on not recommending anything particular i, I use fast fret because i like the form whatever it. it doesn't spill people will use wd-40 to do that and you know that's that's probably fine as well again just check it and make sure you're happy with how it feels and what it does but do that and you've got your strings good to go now one last thing to have a look at is an acoustic guitar so bear with me a moment right acoustic guitar from a point of view of cleaning it very similar to an electric certainly the neck and finger board treat the same way the big difference obviously is the body it's this it's the soundboard the soundboard resonates and is an important part of the sound of the guitar so as a rule we don't want to do anything that's going to dampen that response down the manufacturers of high-end guitars tend to use the thinnest coating that they can put on there with exactly that thought in mind so i would tend to avoid using waxes and polishes as far as i can does it make a really audible difference i honestly don't know certainly some people will put stickers all over their guitars other people won't even put the scratch plate on because they think it deadens it down it's your choice but for me i would tend to just clean it up with a cloth and then leave it as it is do you need to protect the finish well maybe think about willie nelson's trigger that's barely got any wood left in it never mind finish and that seems to do okay there is the thing about protecting the wood so that it doesn't dry out but the inside of the guitar is a great big chunk of unfinished wood anyway so there is nothing you're going to coat on the outside of your guitar that's going to make up for a good humidifier if you're in a part of the world where that's liable to happen to you so acoustic i'd say just clean it and get on with it and there you go it really should be as quick as simple and as cheap as that if this is useful to you maybe think about giving us a thumbs up that's much appreciated hit the subscribe button hit the little bell so you get notified of new content i will see you next time out until then look after yourselves i'm andy picker bye for now